I love you. Love you too. Miss, thank, thank God for you, your love, your faith, your support for the kingdom work, for the work of God in your prayers, your attendance, uh, and supporting the church with your tithe and your offerings. Supporting missions is all about what it's all about. Amen. Turn with me in the book of Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And we're going to be reading at verse 4. We're going to be talking about the parable of the sower and the soils. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful and we're grateful for your love. Thank you for your precious people. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you for the holy anointing of God. Thank you for your spirit, your power, your mercy, grace, and love. Lord, we lift you high upon the throne of our hearts, upon the throne of our lives. Be glorified in us and through us. Be lifted up, be edified, be worshipped, be exalted in praise. Father, I rejoice in the God of my salvation. I rejoice in your spirit. I rejoice in your presence. I rejoice in the power of God. Lord, we ask that you'd give us an open heaven tonight, that you'd rain down your glory, your spirit, your power, your presence. Breath of God, breathe on us. Quicken us with the quickening of the anointing of the good Holy Ghost. Impart the impartation of your love, your grace, and your glory. Let the word go forth with wisdom and power and might and authority in the realm of word. Lord, come and rest down upon us. Walk among your people. Manifest yourself unto us. Show us your glory in the miraculous, in the supernatural, in the miracles of God. May your hand be upon this church. Give us favor with God and with man. Lord, we pray for the harvest of Charles County that you'd bring forth from these little towns and cities uh, from the east, the west, the north, the south, a mighty harvest uh, of souls uh, into the kingdom of God, into our Father's house, house of God, house of bread, house of prayer, into our lives that we may love them and minister to your people, those whom you will send. Bless every home represented here, everyone under the sound of my voice. Uh, breath of God, breathe on us. Uh, have your way in all that you desire to accomplish and to bring forth within our lives. We give you thanks. And Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 4. Father, bless the word today as it go forth. And when a great multitude had gathered and others had come to him, every city, from every city, he, Jesus, spoke the parable. He said, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, with it and choked it but others fell on good ground but others fell on good ground springing up yielding a crop of a hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried he who has ear to hear let him hear then his disciples asked him saying lord <coughs> excuse me what does this parable mean and he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest, to them, it is not given. You want to be a you and not a them. Mm -hmm. Seeing, Jesus said, that seeing they may, they may not see. Even though you see, you don't see. And hearing, they do not understand. 
Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes, takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Look at me for a second. Let me, let me say something. You can hear the word and you can believe and still have it in your heart, but not act upon it. You have to act upon it. How do you act upon it? By owning it and walking it out. And the, what the, you know what that does? That breaks the word open in your spirit. It's no more the seed. The seed now is planted. And Christ is what? The tree springs up. What is the tree? Tree of righteousness. And Christ is formed in you. There's no more the seed. The seed becomes what? A tree. The Bible said we're trees of righteousness planted by the Lord that he might be what? Glorified. See, that's the growth. So as long as even the devil believes, he does not only hear the word, he knows the word. He quoted to Jesus. But he don't believe it. I mean, I mean, he believed it, but he don't live it and walk in it. He doesn't own it. The Bible said that Satan also believes and trembles. There are a lot of people who hear the word, know the word, can tell you Tell you the word, but they don't live it. These are the religious. These are religious people. And so so they they don't have Christ in them. And you can have religious people coming in the church and won't touch Jesus with a ten foot pole. And you see that I think three times in scripture with Christ. Jesus came into the temple and he preached, and there was a religious man. And as Jesus, but he stood up, stood up, and what have we to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? How thou come to torment, be a torment us before the time? And he is in the synagogue. Yeah. And Jesus adjured him to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. So you can believe, but if you don't walk in it, that's why and Jesus talked about people like that. He said, he said, these people are like silly women forever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. No root. No root. No root. And no, so if you don't have a root, there's no tree of righteousness and there's no fruit of righteousness. You're not gonna grow. You're not gonna grow. But the one on the Look at verse 12. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. They hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while. And in time of temptation, they fall away. How many people in all my lifetime have I seen gotten saved and they're doing somersaults in the church. They, they got more God than the preacher. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and uh, they jump in through all the hoops. The K. They go from, uh, uh, from a baby into perfection overnight. Mm -hmm. And you, you just shake your head, you know, uh, because these people don't last. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they, they don't grow. They want to go from here to here, even higher than you. And they just got, they just got saved, you see. So they yet to walk in the word and experience the growth in the word of God. So they don't like, and then they may last a year, they may last six months, they may last a week, they may last a month, they may last even last two years. But they even three, even five, but they don't last forever. You see. See, I've been serving God since since I was eight. 
I'm 72. But you're continually growing. Yeah, well, so that's... Even now. Even now, I'm still growing yes. because I'm still walking in yes. the Word. I'm still believing. And those who believe, believe yes. on the Lord. And then the believing is a continuation yes. of your walk, your faith, your journey, yes. your maturing, your becoming. You see. Verse 14. And the ones that fell among thorns are those who when they heard the word they go out and are choked with the cares of riches and pleasure of life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who have heard the word with a noble and a good heart. What did the Bible say? They keep it. Hello? They didn't just hear it now. To keep it, you got to own it. And it bears fruit, seventy with patience. Ah, patience is what? The journey. Patience. Hallelujah. I just thought I'd share that with you. The parable of the sower and the soil. So it deals with the sower. Who is the sower? Anyone who shares the word. The preacher, Jesus, anyone of the fivefold leadership ministry, you you we are what? We're sowing. And what are we sowing? Seed. Into their life. That's right. Yeah. We're sowing seed. And what is the seed? The word. The word. And what is the word? Christ. Christ, Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is the book. Christ is the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father, let this word take root. Yes. Let it uh let it grow up uh until we become a mature tree of righteousness, bringing forth fruit. Unto righteousness for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seen it. Love you. Welcome. The presence of God's in this place. Yes, The presence of God. Yes, I keep pulling off my glasses. We're picking up on the teaching on faith. Anybody love faith? Why do we need faith? Why does God require faith? Why do we need faith? To walk with God. To please God. To grow. We need faith because we're living, we're earthlings, living in a natural world, a materialistic world. And God is a spirit. In a spirit world, in a spirit realm. And so everything that is the spirit or spiritual has to be a faith. Because in the natural world, you, you live, you see, you feel, you touch. But in this, in this world, the spirit world is oblivion to you. You don't. You don't see the spirit. You don't. You don't. Uh, uh, in fact, if the closest we get to it is what Jesus said to Nicodemus: "With the Holy Spirit, the wind bloweth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, and canst not tell from whence it cometh, and going." So that everyone that is born of the spirit, he compared the spirit moving like the wind, and so that's why it's hard for a lot of church folks and the earthlings to transition from the earthy into the spiritual or the eternal or we call it the heavenly because we're so earthly minded and earthly grounded we're like you often hear pastors say we like the turtle with the shell 
we came in this world with the shell on our back. We, we were born with it, created with it. We call it the body. But the body is only the house. The shell is only where the turtle lives. He's in the house. When he sees the enemy, he closes up the house. <laughs> and you can kick that shell all around. He's in there. But it's closed up. So the animals can't eat him. I try. And when he's after a while, he, he breaks down the, the window. And he can peep out there. You know. And, <laughs> and then he can pick he can move away, you know. Yes. They 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 well we're like the turtle with the shell. You know, this is not us. It's only the house. You say, well, you know, when you look at the turtle in the shell, you see the shell, but he's in there in the house locked up. Only when he began to move does he put his feet out, yeah. his head out, yeah. let the door open, let the right. window down, put yeah. his feet out, his tail is poking out, and he carried his big shell. <laughs> so, so, what did the, what do you think the scripture said? The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, not by feeling, not by what we what we see with the natural eye. If you want to see like Moses, he saw through the eye of the spirit where he saw through faith. And this is where we get connected to God. How do you see God? Through the eyes of faith. You don't see him physically or naturally, but you see him. And you feel him like the wind. You know he's there. You can touch him, he's there. He comes and hugs on you, but you don't see him. He loves on you. He puts his hand on you. He ah, breathes on you. He anoints you. He empowers you. He's there. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So don't say he's not there. He told us, I'm a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Do you believe that? So for you to believe that, you happen to believe what he told you for he that cometh to God must come a rewarder. That's why you come. Why do you think you pray? You believe we all should come that he hear your prayers. He's a rewarder of them that diligently, diligently seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. The unrighteous man is thought. Let him return unto the Lord and to his God. For he will have mercy upon him, upon him and to his God. For he will abundantly pardon. So we have to believe. And that takes faith. Because we don't see it. Now, God tells you what faith is. Faith, say with me, faith is. Now it is. God has given to every man a measure of faith. So every man has faith. Whether you use it or not, God gave you. Even the sinner has faith. He doesn't know he has it, but he has it. God said every man. He didn't say the believer. I've given to do every man. Because the believer, the, the sinner has to have faith to believe God to save him. So he's got the faith. God gave him the faith, the grace, and the gift. No, you have nothing in it. And, and the majority of the Christians stay there. That's as far as they go. They have nothing in it. They have no skin in the game. They have no dog in the heart. I'm not talking about being saved. I'm talking about the journey of becoming like him, not you. Okay? 
So that's why we need faith. That's why faith is critical, pivotal, extremely important for your spiritual development and the journey of you becoming like him. Now the Bible has a lot to say about faith because faith is a very, we brush it off, but faith is a very critical, pivotal, important subject. By faith is mentioned about 20 times just in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1. Just We call it the faith chapter. Sometimes it says through faith, through faith. Verse 1 said, faith is the substance or the matter or the material or the evidence or the ground for belief is the proof. I like that. We are told, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. So even in our walk, we walk by faith. We stand fast in the faith. Paul said, in, and that's found in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Galatians 2, 20, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I live yet, not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live of the flesh, I live it by faith in the Son of God. Not in myself, not in me, because not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. But I live it in the power of God in Christ Jesus, by faith. Romans 1.70, the just shall live by faith. We, we read a lot about little faith, Matthew 6.30, weak faith. Romans 14, 1, no faith, Mark 4, 40, great faith, Luke 7, 9, full of faith, Acts 6 and 8, and all faith, 1 Corinthians 13, 2. It's a Bible has a lot to talk about faith. Because you know why? It's important. Because you're not going to get off a first base without it. You're not going to grow without it. You're not going to walk with God without it. You're not going to come into full maturity without it. You're not going to please God without it. I don't care how much you say you're Christian. And when you throw a faith like it's nothing, ah, faith, then you're in trouble. Because faith is very serious. Hold fast to your faith. Grow in faith. Exercise your faith. Walk in faith. Believe in faith. Worship faith. Singing faith. Living faith. Dancing faith. Rejoicing faith. Believing faith. Coming by faith. Hallelujah. Faith. The Bible said by faith. Hey, look at like, uh, 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 uh. when you look at the, the the faith chapter, by faith, Abel worship. He doesn't see God, neither do you. By faith, Abel worship. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Come on, church, by faith. And look at the evidence. By faith, he obtained a great report because of the evidence. God saw it. Even though he didn't see God, God saw him and God knew him and God accepted his sacrifice. Even though he didn't see God. Because God, and we've got to understand this, that's why you need faith. Say to me, God is a spirit. Now that's hard for a lot of church folks to grasp that. Because we're, a lot of us are yet to grasp that we are also a spirit. Because we think that this is us. 
No. It's only the shell. And the shell go back to the ground. They call it a funeral. And the Bible said, you slip out of it. And you fly away. That's scripture. Because you are an eternal spirit with an eternal soul. So you are a spirit creature with a soul. Now the soul is what makes you a person. An animal doesn't have a soul. Okay? The Bible says all an animal has is life. And the life is in the blood. That's why God said don't eat the blood of an animal. That's all an animal has. No doggy heaven. No birdie heaven. It's only an animal. And when you don't go, when you don't know God, then you go to the tree, even worship an animal. Will you bury them like people? Dog cemetery. Come on, talk to me here. Mm -hmm. You think that's funny? That's how people, that's how humanity goes. Mm -hmm. They worship the creature more than the creator. Mm -hmm. It's only a dog. Mm -hmm. It's only a cat. It's only a bird. Mm -hmm. It's only an animal. No matter what it is. Yeah. It's not a person. Mm -hmm. doesn't have a soul. That's why you can eat an animal. True. By faith, Noah was translated. Faith changes. Faith changes things and faith changes people. How many of you agree with that? Faith changes people. It changed Abel. It changed Enoch. It changed me. You get to see myself in the in the early seventies when when the hippie but remember the hippie generation. I do with them bell bottoms. I thought I was cool. I had long hair on my shoulders. I thought I was cool. You were cool, baby. I I thought I had owned the cat's mouth, but I you know. But God kept me from, from uh, going any further than that. And I thank God for his hand on my life. And kept me from temptation as a young person, as a teenager, as a young adult. I thank God for that. So I'm not here, I'm not here in my own grace and my own strength. I'm here by the grace and the strength and the protection of of my Father God. And I thank God that doesn't go unnoticed with me. I thank God for that. By faith, Enoch was translated. Faith changes people. Faith changes people. Faith changes situations. Faith change. Faith changes. <coughs> By faith, Jacob blessed the sons of Joseph, believing who's going to inherit the future. Take a bless the sons, the grandchildren of Joseph, the grand his grandchildren from his younger son Joseph. And when uh, he he put his hand on the older uh, Joseph, take his hand off, put it on the younger. He said no. He moved his hand again, put it back on the younger. He said this. This one. And he prophesied over them. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. And by faith, he said, listen, I'm going home. My bones are going to be left in, in, in Egypt. But let me tell you, God's coming. And he's going to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And when he delivers the children of Israel, don't you leave my bones in Egypt. But you go dig them up. Get them out of the cemetery. Put them in an old knapsack bag. And carry them. And bury 
bury them in the new land. See, he had faith to believe. It's like us believing in eternity. Like us believing in the future. Us believing, that's my home there. Come on, I'm going there. I'm going to live in here. Come on, hallelujah. I'm living in there. That's like Joseph. You believe that? That's why I serve God. You believe it? That's one of the, that's one of the blessings of serving God. One of the blessings of growing and maturing. And you have faith. I haven't seen it yet. Those in the Old Testament, they saw things afar off, but they never came into it. Even today we see things through the Word of God. The Lord has laid out for us. And so we have to hold fast to our faith. Come into it by faith. Take a hold of it by faith. Believe it by faith. Own it. Say you got to own it. Own it. And walk it out and walk in it by faith. Even though folks might laugh and you think you're cracking crazy. Even when your own children might not agree with him, think you're cuckoo. Mama, mama's gone off the deep end. She's cuckoo. Daddy, he, 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 he's, he's cuckoo. Because they haven't come there to know. So, I, I like Moses, you know. Everybody pulling at daddy, you know. But I'm like Moses, no, I have to, I see what you don't see. I'm, I'm going into what you, you're not, you don't want to. And I'm going to sacrifice this for you. You understand what I'm saying? Hear me. I'm not going to sacrifice this for you, son, or you, daughter. But they have to walk their own They have to walk their own walk. And it's different because the Lord has different plans for them. And they have a different life. They might have a different calling, but the same journey for everyone. you got to understand that. they got a different... Uh, uh, the calling for ministry, whether you're prophet, you know, there's only fivefold ministry that you come into. But the journey never changes. It's for all of us. It's for whosoever will. Let's not forget that. I walked in the wilderness for 40 years saved, but I was in the wilderness. I, I've walked, I had my wilderness journey. My journey in Alexandria for 20 years was my wilderness journey. I know that for a fact. I take that to my grave with me. So by faith, we're looking at faith here with Abel and Enoch. We're looking at faith with uh, Jacob. We're looking at faith with Joseph, with his bones. We're looking at faith with Moses. Faith causes us to refuse some things. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Faith chooses rather to suffer than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ. Think of that. Greater than the riches of Egypt. Wow, oh, blessed God. The Bible said in verse 26, he had respect under the recompense of the reward of Christ. He believed the future. He believed the eternal. He believed the spiritual. He believed in the treasures of God. The riches of eternal God. And he esteemed the riches of Christ far greater than the riches of Egypt. He had respect under the recompense of reward. He had this testimony that he pleased God. I think of the faith of Noah. God came to Noah. Noah gave him the blueprint. Lay it out. Build a boat, Noah. Build a boat, Noah. There's coming a flood. And that was given to him. And he got the family together and went out, built it according to God. Took a hundred years. He was a preacher of righteousness. 
Didn't have one convert. Didn't even have a teenager to get saved. Didn't have a child that even liked him. I'm telling, look at the mark. A hundred years. Nobody like old Noah. And he was, he'd tell them, God's going to bring judgment. Flood's coming. And they make fun of that old. Let's go see the old man up on the mountain. He built in a boat. He crazy, you know. You know, he didn't build it in the water. He built on the mountain. <laughs> no water. <laughs> on the mountain. <laughs> Some folk think the same of you serving God like you do it. It wasn't rain. God watered the earth from the bottom. Remember, God broke up the fountains of the deep. You know, more, you, you know, all of the water. Most of the water is on the ground. By faith, Abraham obeyed God. You know, I mean, walking away from family and everybody, and not knowing where <clears throat> where he was going. Well, well, well. You know, to take take my life by faith, past obey God. Left country, mom, brothers, business, family, friend, an engagement, everything. And just don't know what the future held. Don't know where I'm going. I just knew that I'm going with God. That's no small thing. That's no small. You know, God, God came to me some months ago and reminded me the, the gravity. He said, he said, Son, you have left all for me. And because you have left all, you know, I, I've got your back. You will always be looked after, always provided, always be taken care of, always fall under my protection. I'm with you because you, you left all for me. And, and nothing we do for God. God is not forget. God is not a God that will forget what you do for him. I'm going to tell you, whatever you do for him is not Never goes unnoticed. Anybody remember when Peter loaned Jesus' boat to preach the gospel? He punched out in the river and he preached. And then he said, uh, Peter, did you catch anything? Oh, no, we toiled all night. We caught, no, no. He said, Peter, hey, Peter, launch out in the deep. Get back in the boat, you guys, and go launch out in the deep. Throw them nets out. But, Master, you don't understand. We, we toiled all night. There's nothing out there, he said. Launch out in the deep. Put the nuts out there. Okay, only because you say so. Right. Only because it's you, we're going to do it. <laughs> and buddy, did God bless him. God gave him a year's wages. But it was a year's wages in, in, in income. You know, you don't eat it, you can only eat so much, but that was their, their livelihood to live on, you know. And so God rewarded him. Nothing we do for God. You know, God heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But God bless us. Amen. Abraham of faith. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and, and Esau. Living faith is a, is a blessing faith. By faith, I'm just touching highlights here. By faith, uh, uh, he forsook Egypt, being uh, Moses. Not even fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him. See, he endured as seeing him who was, who is invisible. See, that's why you need faith. God is invisible. You see him. How do you see him? Through the eyes of faith. Now, without faith, you will not even come into the spiritual. So you see how, how precious faith is. How important faith is. Through faith, Moses kept the Passover. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. By faith. When we look at the Egyptians, the Egyptians were faithless. And because they were faithless, guess what? They drowned. <coughs> By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. God said, Joshua, walk around it seven times. And, and, and some crazy things God told Joshua. At the seventh time, blow the shofar. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Do you mean we're not going to fight? No. 
you're just going to walk seven times praising and singing and then at the seventh time you're going to I want all of you that are walk, marching around to blow the shofar I'll handle the rest <laughs> and shout and God took that shout and multiplied magnified like thunder like the greatest army that these people has ever the noise shook the ground put the fear of God where they literally ran where they ran full of fear and all they had to do is now what come in the city <laughs> no fighting in the word of God hallelujah Ah, ah, that's the way it's going to uh, it's going to be when we come back with him in the millennial kingdom after the millennial kingdom to, I, I, mean, I mean when we come back from heaven to set up the kingdom we're not going to fight he's not going to dismount we're not going to dismount he's just going to speak the word speak the word Pew, miracles fire falling the earth opening up I mean, I mean, just speaking the word, the sword, pew, the sword of his mouth, the spoken word, the power of the spoken word. By the word of God, the worlds, the universe, the cosmos were framed by the spoken word of God. There wasn't anything made that was made through the spoken word of God. By, by, by faith, Rahab put her life on the line. For God's people. And he, he, she said because she believed. Even though she was a harlot. She had faith. And she believed God. You know. When you look at God. And you look at the scarlet thread. It had pretty much every walk of life. Everybody was in. Uh, we might call. Good Christian folk you know. I mean you had. I mean. <laughs> I mean. I mean, look at them fishermen. Look at look at Rahab. Look at the look look when you look at the players. Well, look at us. Look at the church today. Look at the players in the church today. You know, God will take the lowest at the pit and raise up, raise up. Hallelujah. Amen. Took Joseph out at the pit to put on the put in the palace to put to be the prime minister. Of the largest nation back then was Egypt. Hallelujah. Glory. Wow, think of that. Or if only God can do. God can do. God, God used the things that the world laugh at, the things that the world poke fun, the things that the world uh, they say, ah, it'll never happen. And the foolish things, the, the Yeah, things that they throw away, things that uh, they have to put no value on. And people, I'm talking about people. And God raised them up by faith. Rahab perished not. See, faith. She believed. Not only she believed, but she acted upon it. She hid the spies. See, that's putting your life on the line. I own this. I believe it. I'm going to put my life on the line for God. I'm going all the way. She she hit the spies. She said, now, when, when you all come back in to take the land, remember me. And they said to her, well, how will we know the house on the wall? Remember, she's on the wall. Be wall. You know? She said, I'll, I'll put, this, I'll put a scarlet rope out the window that when you come you know it's me <laughs> see that's faith you acting on faith faith is what the substance of things that you hope for the evidence she didn't see it yet of things not seen and everybody was well, when they took a Jericho I mean the sword was wielded but she was safe she was protected Hallelujah. By faith. By faith. Oh, hallelujah. And, and and time is gone for me to go any further than this. But I was just touching highlights here. By faith. Last one, last week we talked about uh, 
we talked about the lack of faith. And I only got on on page two of the ten pages. And then we'll pick that up another day. We talked about how faith, how, how the lack of faith produces fear. We did that last week. I'm not going to tell you, the time is gone. And then also we talk about how the lack of faith causes reasoning. <clears throat> And I think, I think we was on one more. We talk about the lack of faith, if I'm right. Uh, we begin that the lack of faith defeats the purpose of God. And we, we, we were getting into that and the time run out. So uh, we're going to hold on to that. Oh, praise God. You know, I love, I love faith. Can I tell you something? It is faith that has brought me where I am in my life. It is faith that has, that has uh, caused me to grow in, in, in maturity. It is faith that uh, it is faith in my life where I have taken a leap of faith through pivotal moments in your life where you have to just take a leap of faith and trust God and and uh, <clears throat> all my pastoring was a leap of faith when you have to walk away from something go into something that you've never been before don't know what you're going to meet Okay? And you have to know that God, that this work is finished and that he will go with you. And you know that this is God's assignment. And you know what? Like Moses, God, I don't want to go anywhere without you. And if I go, I want you to go with me. And if you go with me, I want you to show up and let the people see that you're with me. Oh. Ha, ha. Come on, church. Hallelujah. I love that. that. Well, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. You know, where, where you, don't, you don't miss a beat. Not only that, but you got peace. You're walking in his rest, in his comfort, in his joy. Not, not looking at, at numbers and. Uh, no, 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 no. You, you walk in. In the divine will of God, yeah. knowing that you're in the center yeah. of His heart and His will, and you got peace. You're not restful. You got peace. You're not looking for nothing more. People pulling at you. No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're just where God wants you. Yeah. And when you know that, there's that deep, settled peace. Yeah. The love and the presence of God is with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bigness is not always God, you know. Bigness is not always God, you know. I'm telling you, you know. Now, I, 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 I'm not saying all bigness, because God works in big, in big miracles too. But not all bigness is God. I've been in some big churches, and I wish to God I hadn't gone, you know. Because you can, you can go... In, in, in things that man has falsely created. A lot of them are fallen. Oh yeah, they will because God's not in it. Only, only, only God said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail, overcome it. And then he said, except the Lord build the house, the, the, we labor in vain that built it. And except the Lord keep the people. The watchman watch it, but in fact, you can't keep the people. As much as you much as you uh, are kind to them and love on them and and, uh, and uh, that's fine, but they don't a lot of them don't like what you're bringing. They might like you, but they don't like this. <laughs> And this is the sword that do the cutting and the separating. So much as they love you, bye, Pastor. I, I gotta go. I can't sit under that. You know, they like you, but they don't like what you bring it. You see. 
They're like you, but they don't like Jesus. <laughs> they like you, but they don't love the word. They like you, but they don't love the Holy Spirit. They like you, but they don't love truth. Something's required of them. The they don't time. like like you, but they don't, they, 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 they don't want to be committed. They just, they just want to come. And, they don't want to be accountable. That's the key word is accountability. That's right. That, to the word that there you go. There and you go. But I think home. people are enjoying it and I turn around and I don't see them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, well, maybe on vacation. That's why you gotta, don't know. That's why you gotta I keep your know. eyes on Jesus. Oh, gotta keep your Christ. eyes on the Jesus. Word the, the word is fire, though, Pastor. The word separates. Yes. The word sanctifies. Sever. Severed. The word. We keep forgetting the word is a sword. The sword. And what the sword does is the, the sword decapitates you. You, your flesh. You, your flesh. You're off with your head. Because God wants you dead. He don't want He wants you dead. So the, it's only when you die can he live. And we got to get that. Only when we die can he live. He that loveth his life shall lose it. But he that loseth his life for my sake shall find life. And the life you find is his. Because you gave up yours. Remember when Christ who is our life shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Guarantee rapture. And so we, we sing the song, I just simply live for Christ. You just simply live because it's not you who living. It's the Christ in you who lives. So, so you're not saying, well, if I could just make it through Monday. If I could just make it through Friday. If I could just go to heaven. No. But these people are dreadful because they have not really fully come to Christ. All they have received is the free gift. But they fail to get to know the one who gave them the gift. And Paul calls it, that's the initial work of salvation. And that's the elementary phase of it. And he tells us, move on. So there's nothing better, Sister Kay, Brother Mark. He wouldn't have told us, move on from the elementary stage. That's a stage you're in. That's a baby stage. But you grow out of that. You don't stay a baby. You grow out of the elementary stage. Remember, the salvation is the total journey of your life. For only when he that endured to the end. The same shall be said. The one who endured the same. Same person who endured to the end. Is saved. So those people are in the 10 to 30 mark you say pastor. They never get past that. You've got different different groups. We're talking about the different or different ranks. Uh, that's like in the military. <coughs> Uh, from 1 to 30, 1 to 30, there's a rank. 30 to 60, another rank. 60 to the 100, another rank. Then you got, then you got the, the church in a rank. Then you got the spirit of just man made perfect. The spirits of just man, that's another rank. The different ranks. Satan has ranks, principalities and powers, the strong man, the unclean spirit, seducing. I mean, look at, look at the structure of Satan. Well, so it is. You know, how you preach and say, well, you know, we're all the same. No. No. God is not a cookie cutter God. You know what a cookie cutter is? You got a form and you just stamp the door. Boom, 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 boom. And everything looked the same. No, no, 
Oh, no, no. You are an individual creation with individual purpose, yeah. an individual plan. Yeah. And God has a special plan for you and a purpose yeah. for you. Yeah. And he made you that you could only fit here in the eternal temple. Yeah. And you have a, he has a place for you in your reigning, yeah. everything about you. Yeah. They never want to grow. Yeah. They never want the deeper things of God. Yeah. There's so much. It's like an ocean. He has I mean, so many things to seek out. You have Sister to Mara. Why are they satisfied? Because they don't. Why are they satisfied? And, 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 and remember, Jesus told us that. What you just said? Jesus said, you are like silly women, forever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. You hear, but you don't want to come into it. You're happy just being where, where you're you at. at. They're happy. They're satisfied. And I, I've, I've, I've seen this. I've talked with folks, pastors, and, and people in churches, and they get indignant. Ah, don't bother me. Man, I, 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 I'm safe, you know. I'm just interested in, uh, you know, that's where they're at, and they're, they're, they're very... Defensive, they're very indignant in defending that basic premise of being saved. We have a hunger, we have a thirst that cannot be fed. He can go if all he wants, and we're gonna come back tomorrow because we need more. That's right, and that's just we're hungry. But you see, everybody's not there. Amen. 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 But they're Amen. not there. They're yeah. still on training wheels, and they don't want and to take them off. They're satisfied. They're content, yeah. which is beyond me. Oh, yeah. and, and given everything they're going through in life. God told us that we can come into the fullness of God, okay. of God yeah. and the fullness of Christ. Hear what he says. Yeah. So there is more. He tells us oh, more. Yeah. That you might be filled with all of the fullness of God and of Jesus Christ. That's why we're going to go in that council debate. Yeah. I want to reach that stature, though. Oh, That's my goodness. Paul oh, I know. About. I that know. Stature, you know what I mean? Paul, 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 I want to know. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, I mean. it's not over till it's over. Yeah. Even you shall bring forth fruit. Even in your old age. And God measures your life. By the fruit. By their fruit. Ye shall know where they are in their spiritual development. Their maturity. Their fruit in their life. The evidence. The fruit is the evidence of the tree. The evidence in your life. 